presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord rushed upon David. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side, with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world, in the Lord. Live as children of light, for light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the fruitless works of darkness, rather expose them for it is shameful even to mention the things done by them in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore, it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I am the light of the world, says the Lord. Whoever follows me will have the light of life. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. A proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to John. As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither he nor his parents sinned. It is so that the works of God might be made visible through him. We have to do the works of the one who sent me while it is is day. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made clay with the saliva and smeared the clay on his eyes and said to him, Go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back able to see. His neighbors and those who who had seen him earlier as a beggar said, Isn't this the one who used to sit and beg? Someone said, It is. But others said, no, he just looks like him. He said, I am. So they said to him, how were your eyes opened? He replied, the man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and told me, go to Siloam and wash. So I went there and washed and was able to see. And they said to him, where is he? He said, I don't know. They brought the one who was once blind to the Pharisees. Now Jesus made clay and opened his eyes on on the Sabbath. So then the Pharisees also asked him how he was able to see. He said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and now I can see. So some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, 
because he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a a sinful man do such signs? And there was a division among them. So they said to the blind man again, What do you have to say about him, since he opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. Now the Jews did not believe that he had been blind and gained his sight, until they summoned the parents of the one who had gained his sight. They asked him, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How does he now see? His parents answered and said, We know that this is our son, and that he was born blind. We do not know how he sees now, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He can speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone acknowledged him as the Christ, he would be expelled from the synagogue. For this reason his parents said, He is of age, question him. So a second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He replied, If he is a sinner, I do not know. One thing I do know is that I was blind, and now I see. So they said to him, What did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I told you already, and you do not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? They ridiculed him and said, You are that man's disciples. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but we do not know where this man is from. The man answered and said to them, This is what is so amazing, that you do not know where he is from, yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if one is devout and does his will, he listens to him. It is, unheard of a, it is unheard of that anyone ever opened the eyes of a blind person. If this man were not from God, he would not be able to do anything. They answered and said to him, You were born totally in sin, and you are trying to teach us? Then they threw him out. When Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, he found him and said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered and said, Who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, I do believe, Lord, and he worshipped him. Then Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see might see, and those who do see might become blind. So the Pharisees who were with him heard this, and said to him in reply, Surely we are not also blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you are saying, we see, so your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. The readings we have today mark the fourth Sunday of of Lent, meant to guide us on our journey through the desert of Lent to prepare us to celebrate the Holy Week and the Paschal Triduum, to prepare those especially preparing to receive the sacraments of initiation baptism and confirmation and Eucharist. But if we read them very carefully, they also give us a great insight and guidance during this time of great crisis. We find ourselves with a lot of anxiety, a lot of hype. We see it on TV, we see it in the newspapers, we see it on the internet, we see it in the supermarkets. A lot of anxiety, a lot of hype, almost on the border of hysteria. But somehow what the readings offer us gives us that guidance we need during these difficult times. We follow the journey of the blind man from the very beginning to the very end of the gospel. He was born blind. Jesus encounters him and taking that ordinary thing of paste made of mud, anoints him and he's able to see. First he recognizes Jesus as the man called Jesus. Then later on he recognizes him as a prophet. And then while the man has his dialogue with the Pharisees later on the gospel, he's teaching them about God, about how God works in our lives through good deeds. And eventually comes to have that encounter once again with Jesus, who invites him to see with those eyes of faith. And he worships Jesus as the Messiah, as Lord. In many ways, the journey of that blind man echoes our own journey, that slowly we come to see with those eyes of faith 
to have that vision of faith. And Lent gives us that opportunity to deepen that vision of faith, to see with those eyes of faith, to see Christ present among us and within us, to see him journeying with us in these difficult times of a pandemic, offering us that gift of mercy, that gift of peace, that gift of vision, to see him in, those, in these difficult times. It echoes what we hear in the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, that we are called to be children of light and to live as children of light. Our world is pretty dark right now. It needs that light, that light of faith, that as we journey through the season of Lent, as we renew in that grace of the Eucharist and baptism, we grow in that, in that light of Christ and call to be that light by our prayers for those who have died because of this pandemic, for those who are suffering, for those who find this time to be extremely difficult and scary, to be with those in the medical and scientific world as they seek a resolution to what's happening before us. We need that, those eyes of faith to help us, to, be, to show that compassion, that patience, with our family, with our loved ones, to be present to those who may be sick or tested positive, to be with, to show that patience when we're on the long lines in the supermarket and wondering what's going on. So as we celebrate this Eucharist, we pray to have that vision of faith. We ask the Lord to anoint us with that grace of his mercy and peace, to see with eyes of faith, to be that light in our dark world. We pray that our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests will provide proper guidance to the faithful about their responsibility to respond to the threat of the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. We pray that those burdened by physical disabilities will find comfort and consolation in joining their sufferings with those of Jesus on the cross. We pray to the Lord. We pray that those who unselfishly care for the sick and suffering will discover peace of mind and an inner happiness in the service they provide. We pray to the Lord. We pray that the trauma of our present day will call all of us to examine our own relationship with God and its influence on our own lives. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who are spiritually blind especially those who have left the church, that the light of Christ will shine in their hearts and minds. We pray to the Lord. 
We pray that those who are near death may enter the kingdom of heaven, fortified by the sacraments provided by the church for the sick and suffering. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick people in our families, parish, and community who cannot be with us today, especially Lou Serrano, Marcani Gomez Rodriguez, Wilma Romero, Maria Dolores Duran, Lizette Gonzalez, Mariangel Baez Torres, Delia Flores, Mike Ruiz, Juanita Mendoza, Liz Rodriguez, Eduvigis Echevarria, Ramiro Veldugo, Manuel Antonio Romero. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all worldwide threatened by the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. We pray that those who have died may find their true home in the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Amen. By the mystery of the Incarnation, he has led the human race that walked in darkness into the radiance of the faith, and has brought those born in slavery to ancient sin through the waters of regeneration to make them your adopted children. And therefore, all, cre all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Sovereign of the Highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O 
things, all of you, and your covenant. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, and Nicholas our Bishop, and with all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and Glorious Martyrs, St. Francis and St. Clair, Blessed Solanus Casey, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may we merit to be heirs to eternal life, and may praise you, Lord, Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share this banquet of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to hear you answer in my name. But only to say the word, my soul shall be in me.
the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Look upon those who call to you, O Lord, and sustain the weak. Give life by your unfailing light to those who walk in the shadow of darkness. And bring those rescued by your mercy from every evil to reach the highest good. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.